Hi guys, welcome to the July edition of Simply Scuba Live. Uh, due to some scheduling issues, uh, this is going to have to be a pre-recorded show, but we're going to be covering all of the same stuff that I usually do on my, uh, on my live monthly show. So first off, let's have a look at the news. Okay, so for the July news, uh, there's a few sort of bits and bobs, a few new um, sort of additions to our range, uh, and a few interesting sort of news stories. The first one um, you probably have seen on our Facebook and uh, and Twitter and so all sort of social media accounts is uh, we've just got a, a new range of Sea Doo Diver Propulsion Vehicles (DPVs), and uh, and we're going to give one away. So all you need to do is go to our Facebook page, uh, find the post where um, it sort of tells you win a sea do and, uh, and just like and share it and that will put you into the running to win a, uh, a sea do GTI DPV. Uh, as I said earlier, yeah, uh, we've got five new sea do's um, that we're holding in stock. The first one, the bright red one, is the, uh, the GTI, so this is the baby of the range, um, but it still just kind of pulls you along, whether you're on scuba or whether you're all um, just snorkeling, uh, it's just a good bit of fun but um, as you move up the range, they go faster and faster and they have different um, sort of gear ratios. So they, uh, the RS1, the black one on the bottom right of your screen, will, um, will have three different gears, so you can choose how fast you move. These are particularly useful for, uh, for moving on wrecks and, uh, and your larger dive sites. This way, you're not tiring yourself out, you're, uh, you're not using as much air because you're not tiring yourself out. Um, and you're getting a good sort of hour, hour and a half of battery life out of some of them. Uh, the one on the top right is an inflatable sea do, and, uh, and this is meant for kids, this is more for fun. Um, it's basically an inflatable jet ski, and on the underside you have one of these um, uh, like sort of miniature outboard engines, and uh, it's just gonna let them buzz around on the surface for a bit, just for a bit of fun. In the news, uh, a lady called uh, Ina Dimitrova uh, has just beaten, or not beaten, um, created a new world record for the deepest saltwater dive by a female. Uh, she did this out in Egypt, and uh, she reached a maximum depth of 201.2 meters. Uh, her descent was five minutes, 40 seconds to get down, and then she spent 282 minutes ascending, doing various decompression stops. Uh, so well done to her. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the male uh, world record is held by a, uh, a man called uh, I think it's Ahmed Gaba. Uh, he recently broke the the, um, the male world record um, just a couple months ago. Uh, new in the shop, uh, we've had a big change around in the shop. We've um, for all of our locals and all of our regulars that come into the shop, um, all of it has been swapped around. So now Scuba has the largest portion of the shop. Uh, right next to the counter, so there's a lot more square footage. We've managed to put a lot more equipment into uh, into the shop, so you can touch and you can browse and you can just check stuff out. To celebrate Women's Dive Day, I took Katie from down in the shop um, scuba diving to go through her uh, her paddy open water. Uh, Paddy's Women's Dive Day is going to be an annual thing on the 18th of July, and um, she was a, a very very good student. Um, she got all of her, uh, her skills first time uh, and didn't really have any issues. Um, all of you hopefully know the, uh, the Paddy Open Water course. She, uh, you can see her here working through her, um, her knowledge reviews and her quick quizzes and um, she was fine. She passed her exam. <coughs> so she'll be, uh, she'll be a qualified diver soon, as soon as I can get to do four open water dives. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, Scuba Fest is on the 14th to 16th of August. Uh, this is in Anglesey in North Wales, so if you're about, uh, come visit. I'm going to be there, I'm going to be handing out flyers and just kind of meeting and greeting and taking pictures. Um, so if you want to find me, uh, I'm going to be handing out flyers. There might be um, little goodie bags as well, um, so it's always worth just uh, trying to hunt me down. Uh, but it's a really nice place to, uh, to go diving and um, they've got a whole um, sort of regime of what's going to be going on. Lots of different rib dives and, uh, and shore dives. The um, SSI are going to be doing some uh, free diving classes. So um, there's a lot to learn. A lot of the, um, the suppliers are going to be there, Apex and uh, Atomic. Uh, yeah, quite a few of them are going to be there. So you can sort of have a look at all of their new equipment uh, and even try some of it out. 
Okay, so the next bit of news is our own brand t-shirts have arrived. Uh, if you've been watching my previous shows, I've been asking you guys about um, sort of different designs and different colors that you guys want. Uh, generally, all of your reviews have been fairly positive and, um, and yeah, you like, um, you like the designs. So, um, so we've had them made up. They come in all sorts of different sizes. Uh, we're starting to expand the, uh, the current size range from a, different, um, from a couple of recommendations, but also because uh, we've been selling out of, um, I mean, the, the blue one, the one with the mask on the front, the um, Life Looks Better Underwater, we sold out of all sizes in, uh, in one weekend. So they're really, really popular. Um, so we've decided to expand the, uh, the size range of some of them and hold more in stock uh, to, uh, to avoid uh, any disappointment. So uh, if ever you, uh, you come up to, uh, if you're buying online or, uh, or you're thinking about coming into the shop, go onto the website, have a look at the, um, the own brand t-shirts. They're all separate products, but, uh, but in that all the different sizes will tell you whether they're in stock or out of stock. If they're in stock, of course, they're here, they're ready, you can buy them straight away, uh, or they'll be in the shop so you can, uh, so you can buy them. Uh, if it ever says uh, out of stock, uh, it will have a notify me option. So all you do is you click on the button, enter your email address, and as soon as Ben in the warehouse scans them back into stock, our computer will send you an email just to say that size is back in stock, uh, and then you can order it then and there. Uh, these t-shirts are really high quality. Uh, we went to a, uh, a local British um, company that prints t-shirts, and, um, and we, we decided to go for the higher end t-shirt. Um, that way they're not flimsy, uh, they're really nice, high quality, the fabric's nice and soft and, uh, and the build quality is really, really good. We also have, uh, we're bringing out a lot of own brand equipment uh, from Simply Scuba. Uh, a few of you will already have seen the, uh, the mask strap wrappers, the slap straps, the, um, the padded mask bags, uh, but we're also bringing out snorkeling bags. So on the far left of your screen, we've got the snorkeling bag. So this is various different compartments. The main compartment fits your full foot fins. And, uh, and then you have a mask um, sort of pouch on the front. Uh, and that's big enough to fit your, um, your padded mask and, uh, and your mask inside of it. And then you have a, uh, a third compartment to put your snorkel and any accessories in that you want. Single backpack strap and, uh, and a phone caddy on, the, on that strap. It's, it's just really useful if you're just going snorkeling, uh, just to chuck all your equipment in that uh, to go to and from the dive site. Uh, it's also got a lot of um, mesh panels and that's gonna allow all your equipment to drip dry as well. That way you don't, you're not left with this sort of puddle of water in the bottom of your bag. Two new dry bags. Um, we've got a five liter and a 35 liter roll top dry bag. Now these are made out of a, a heavy duty PVC um, coated tarpaulin. Uh, so they're really nice and tough. You can fill these up with water. They're completely watertight. And, uh, and when you roll the top over and clip it closed, uh, it's, it's a dry top as well. So you can put your equipment. Um, the smaller one's great for all your, uh, your mobile phone, your car keys and a small towel. Uh, the larger one, you can put your wetsuit um, or, uh, and your towel and anything that you want to fit into that. And you can either keep it dry. If it's raining outside, you can keep whatever inside it dry or vice versa, if you've got your wet wetsuit, you can put it in there, roll it up, put it in the back of your car, and it's gonna keep all the water inside the bag so your car's not gonna get all wet. We also have the, uh, the mesh drawstring bag. So these are just a very standard um, sort of mesh drawstring bag with a, uh, with a backpack strap. And um, just to put all of your snorkeling equipment in, it's a lot lighter, uh, it's a lot, um, a lot simpler, but um, yeah, you can put anything you want in there. And we also have our little, um, our little Simply Scuba keychain. Um, so that's just a pound. Just nice to put on a, um, on a zipper pull or on your keys. Um, yeah, it's really nice and tough and uh, just bright and colorful and just lets everyone know that you're a scuba diver. Uh, also in the news, Monty Hawes has just written us a blog uh, from his adventures in the Komodo Isle, uh, sort of off the Komodo Island. And um, it's a really good read. You can find it if you just go to our website. On the top right hand corner, there's a, a little button that just says blog. Click on that and scroll through all our blogs. Uh, I've been writing a few about where I've been out and about. Uh, Monty Halls has just written us one uh, on his adventure over around Komodo Island. Next bit of news is, uh, is still, uh, I mentioned it last month. Our, uh, our win 500 pounds um, of Simply Scuba gift vouchers 
is, uh, is still active, all you need to do is go to simplyscuba.com forward slash win and, uh, and enter your email address in there. And that's, uh, that puts you into the running for, uh, to win a 500 pounds Simply Scuba gift card. Uh, the closing date for, uh, for all entries is the 20th of August. Um, so uh, so, so get, your, uh, get yourself into the running as early as possible. Okay, so let's have a look at some questions. Okay, so we've only got a few questions from you guys because uh, this is a pre-recorded show, uh, but these are a few questions that we've had already posted to us. Uh, so the first one's from George. George asks, uh, with the forecoming changes to be made to paddy courses, will this render the, conf uh, the confined open water cue cards now inaccurate and obsolete? Um, would like to know before I buy a set. So, um, so the changes, uh, basically paddy, sort of mid to late last year, they, um, they updated the Paddy Open Water Diver course. Uh, but what they've done is they've, they're doing it on a really, really long um, rollout um, to the point where the old curriculum is still going to be valid until uh, I think it's the middle of next year, sort of 2016. Uh, so your old slates are still going to be fine, uh, but all of the ones that are being um, shipped and distributed from Paddy right now are the new curriculum. Um, so the slate at the bottom, they'll have a date, and um, yeah, it's um, I think it's like 0713 uh, or 0714 uh, are now the uh, the up to date slates. Um, so yeah, any that you buy from now on will be the um, the current up to date curriculum. Uh, Dan on Discuss asks, uh, "Hi, I'm looking for a hose to attach my Sunto transmitter to the first stage. Uh, I have seen the Hollis six inch hose and have added this." What size swivel do I need for the Sunto transmitter uh, that you're offering with the Viper Air? So, uh, so with a lot of uh, regulator first stages, the, um, the actual space that's allowed to, uh, to screw a high pressure port in um, doesn't always allow for like, other brands like Sunto transmitters to screw into. Sometimes the actual nut on the transmitter will, um, will start to hit the body before it's screwed in all the way. Uh, also, I like to take the, um, the transmitter and put it, I put it on a six inch hose as well, um, just because that's about 250 pounds and it's just a little um, sort of bit of plastic that just sticks out. If that hits on a rock or a piece of wreck, uh, it's just gonna dislodge it, break the seal and that's 250 pounds down the drain. Whereas if it's on like a six inch hose, it's got a bit of flexibility. Um, so yeah, but with all um, high pressure ports and high pressure hoses, you need a swivel. Uh, on our website, we do a, um, a Sunto swivel pin uh, and that will screw into, uh, no, it won't screw into, uh, that will fit into the, uh, the Hollis six inch hose and the other end will fit into the, uh, the Sunto transmitter. Uh, so have a look for a, um, it's just a swivel pin uh, or you can have a look at, I think it's a 17 millimeter uh, swivel pin with like a little shoulder and um, that should do the job. Uh, Matthew via email asks, uh, I wanted to ask about the Tusa Freedom HD mask. Uh, I'm da, 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 da. Uh, The mask looks great. I just wanted to ask how it is for equalizing. It looks like the nose part is slightly smaller because of the mask shape and wondered whether it's likely to make equalizing more uncomfortable or harder. Uh, so the Freedom HD has a, uh, a very large uh, sort of open frame design. Um, and that does start to encroach in the sort of nose pocket but it's still a, you can still get to the nose pocket, you can still equalize very easily, even with gloves. Um, you just tend to have to do it from underneath instead of, sort of straight in front. You can still access it, but, uh, but with the frame coming a bit over the nose pocket, you don't have quite the same access. Uh, it won't be uncomfortable in the slightest. Um, the Tusa Freedom skirt is designed to be more comfortable, um, but yeah, you, you can still equalize, that's fine. So right now I'm going to have a quick chat about the uh, the Sea-Doo's and I've got one here with me. This is the RS3. <coughs> so this one comes with a, uh, a lithium ion battery which gives it a really reliable and strong battery power. Uh, this one has two adjustable gears, um, so two speeds in it and um, uh, it's just really a really useful piece of kit. You can adjust, uh, you can add trim weight on the bottom here um, you can change its buoyancy. There's also, it comes with a GoPro mount that sits on the top. 
So you can have your GoPro fitted facing forwards or facing you, so it can record you sort of buzzing around the dive site. They're very, very useful for, uh, for larger wrecks. If you descend down the, um, to the bow of a, uh, of a really large shipwreck, but, um, but then you need to go to the stern section, that can be a long swim, especially if there's current. So one of these would just take all of the, uh, the effort out of that. Uh, it conserves your air, it conserves your bottom time, and it just makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Uh, so they're really, really simple to use. They all have um, redundant dead switches, so you have to hold down both triggers for them to go. This one has that little sort of on-off switch that just isolates the battery. So whenever it's in storage, you don't have to take the battery out completely. You can just isolate it. It's got a battery life indicated there as well, little green LEDs. Uh, but to activate it, if you hold down one trigger or the other, that won't do anything. But as soon as you hold down both, it wakes up. And then when you hold down both and toggle one of the triggers, it steps up to the higher gear. So if you just want to gently cruise around a dive site, you can just put it in first gear. But then if you want to step it up a notch, you can step it up onto uh, to second gear and that will really shift you through the water. Really nice battery life on these and, uh, and a fairly good speed. Uh, when you look at it, the top of the range is about seven kilometers per hour. Um, that sounds a bit naff, but when you're underwater, they shift. Um, so very, very good for snorkelers, um, just to buzz around. For scuba divers, they're very, very useful. You just have to pay attention to your buoyancy. Uh, and this is some of the skills that we teach you on the, um, the PADI um, DPV course. Very, very useful piece of kit. Um, I've used them before out in open water and, uh, and in the pool. Uh, they're, they're really, really cool to play around with. So let's have a look at some side mount presentation. Uh, that's this month's presentation. I've had a few questions about side mount. Um, so I decided just to do a quick presentation just to show you guys the, uh, the major benefits of side mount. Okay, so, uh, so in, the past, in the past few months, I've had uh, quite a few questions about side mount diving and uh, whether it's sort of worth it and its pros and cons and whatnot. So I thought I'd just do a quick presentation on, uh, on side mount because I enjoy side mount myself. Uh, I think it's a much more practical way of diving. Um, so I'm just going to go into the sort of history, sort of where it started and, uh, and how it can help you um, today. So first of all, um, side mount diving started with the cave divers. Now um, traditionally with, uh, with back, back, uh, back mount cylinders, you, they'd, um, they'd go in and, uh, and they'd find more confined areas that they'd want to explore, but because they have their stages strapped on their back, uh, they couldn't fit through. So they'd end up trying to take their BCD off and all this kind of stuff and push it through the gap in front of them uh, and then put it back on. This is just a bit impractical. And um, so when they started exploring further and in, um, and in more confined spaces, they turned to more side slung cylinders. By strapping them onto their side, they could fit through much tighter gaps. And also because they weren't physically bolted onto their backs, uh, they're a lot more flexible. You could take the cylinders off just single-handedly and uh, whilst leaving your buoyancy compensator on. Um, and so side mount was born. For, uh, for extended um, access to go in deeper, of course you need more stages anyway. So, um, so you can see the, uh, the two divers on the left, they're diving on twins, but they also have um, two side mount slung cylinders on their, uh, on their left hand side. So with this, you can have more gas mixes and, um, and it just increases the redundancy. That way, if something were to go wrong, if any of you uh, out there are, um, are uh, dive with twins, you'll have been through all of your, uh, your shutdown drills and all of that, and you realize that you have to be really, really flexible to be able to reach that, um, uh, that isolation valve in the center. And, uh, and trying to figure out which first stage, if there's a first stage fault, um, yeah, you, you need to be uh, really switched on and, uh, and nice and calm to really switch everything off, isolate the issue and, um, and fix it. Whereas with side mount, it's, it's all in front of you, it's all very flexible, so if something um, goes wrong, you can fix it in front of you. You don't have to be reaching round behind your shoulders to be able to access them. So the benefits of side mount, the first one I've already mentioned is you are, um, you are incredibly uh, flat. So you can fit through much tighter gaps. There's quite a few um, videos on YouTube of side mount divers 
fitting through the smallest of portholes. Um, so this is really useful for wreck diving. Um, I've been diving in a few wrecks on side mount and yeah, you could make it through on, um, on a twin set, but it would be kind of big and bulky and you, you'd sort of bump into the, to the side of things. But with side mount, you can just kind of take them off, move them around and, uh, and fit through any space that you want. Also, if you don't need all of that gas, you can unclip one of your stages and then just clip it to the outside of the wreck and come back for it later. Uh, you are incredibly flexible. Uh, another main benefit is actually getting kitted up. Uh, I used to teach um, scuba diving on twin sets. So um, <clears throat> if any of you have bad backs, trying to pick up a twin set when you're already fully kitted up, just to walk down to the water is a real pain. That's a good sort of 40, 50 kilos um, plus anything extra. So um, if you suffer from a bad back, that's gonna be a real pain, literally. Whereas with side mount, you can carry one cylinder down, put it in the water, walk back up, get your second stage, or your second stage cylinder, sorry, um, carry that down into the water, put it next to it, put your BCD on with no weight and, uh, and just walk into the water and then get kitted up. Um, so it's much more civilized. Um, whenever I dive with, uh, with my friends who are on, uh, on back mount cylinders, they're all getting kitted up and they're waiting around doing their pre-dive safety checks and uh, they're complaining about their backs hurt and their shoulders hurt. Whereas I'm just wearing a BCD, my, um, uh, my two stages, they're already ready. Um, and then I can put them on in the water with no weight on my shoulders. So if you suffer from, uh, from a bad back or bad shoulders, uh, I mean, I've got tendonitis in my left hand shoulder. So um, yeah, carrying two um, sort of 300 bar cylinders can be a real pain, but getting kitted up in the water is, uh, is much more civilized and vice versa, getting out after the dive. You've just been for an hour or hour and a half long dive, uh, you're fairly tired, and then what you've got to do, you've got to climb out the water. So then you suddenly realize how heavy those cylinders were again. So with side mount, no, just unclip one of the stages or both of the stages, clip them onto um, to a shot line or something, make your way out the water, de-kit as much as you want to, go back and get them later. Um, it, it, it's so much more civilized than um, trying to lug a heavy twin set out. Uh, and then back to, uh, to flexibility, you, um, yeah, you can have all sorts of um, different customizations, uh, different ways of diving, different trim as well. Uh, that's another one of the main benefits is that you're so horizontally um, buoyant that your trim is, you can adjust it whilst you're in the water. Um, the, uh, the diver at the bottom, in the bottom section of, this, uh, of these images, uh, you can actually access your cam bands and you can slip them further up or further down the cylinder. This is one of the skills that you learn in your, uh, in your side mount course. And, uh, and this sort of just allows you to shift that trim a little bit further forwards, a little bit further backwards. Um, so you're perfectly horizontal in the water. Uh, you're very laterally compressed as well. So if you start to turn to one side, uh, it'll just kind of level you out again. You're, um, you're wonderfully buoyant in the water. And, uh, and you're incredibly flexible as well. With, uh, with gas management, yes, you have two stages. So, um, so you have two different pressure gauges and uh, depending on how you like um, them set up, they, uh, they either point straight out in front of you. That way, all you have to do is just glance downwards and you have two pressure gauges both facing you and they tell you exactly how much air is in, your, uh, in each stage. You don't have to be looking for your submersible pressure gauge. You don't have to clip it off anywhere. They're just sticking out in front of you. You just glance at them and you can see how much gas you got in each of them. Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, you can, uh, you can take your stages off in the water. And, uh, and as you see in the middle image, uh, he's using aluminiums. <coughs> and, uh, and when they start to, um, to get low on gas, they will float. So, um, so you can adjust your buoyancy accordingly. And, uh, and when you're getting out, you can just unclip them and just kind of leave them there. They'll just float gently on the surface. All sorts of um, added modifications. Uh, a lot of the, um, the BCDs, they started off fairly sort of generic BCDs that divers would customize and add sort of butt plates with rails on um, to attach the, uh, the bottom of the, the stages. 
but now more and more of the manufacturers are coming out with dedicated side mount BCDs and these are designed specifically for side mounts. So, um, so when your low pressure inflator hose is started coming over your left hand shoulder, now they're finding that more and more divers prefer the, um, the low pressure inflator to come underneath one of their arms and clip it off to, uh, to your chest. Um, so it's, it's a very, very flexible way of diving. There's no sort of gospel true right or wrong way to go side mount diving. It's, uh, it's a very sort of personal thing. Some people like it one way, some people prefer it another. Um, but it's just like learning to drive. When you do your side mount course, you, um, you learn the basics, you learn how to do it, and you learn the, um, the essentials of side mounts and the safety and redundancy skills. But, um, but then after that, you, uh, you go out into the open world and you start learning how you like to dive your equipment and, uh, and just adjust it and tweak just sort of how you like it set up. Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so you have two first stages, two second stages and, um, and redundant low pressure inflators. So one for your dry suit, one for your BCD if you're diving in a dry suit. And uh, on your right hand stage, I prefer it on my right hand stage, I tend to have a, uh, a really long hose. So mine's about one and a half meters, I think. And, um, and that wraps down the stage. It comes up over my neck and then sits over my shoulder. My left hand stage has a shorter hose. It's only about 90, 95 centimeters. That again goes over my neck uh, on the other side. And, uh, and I've got a necklace over the, um, the mouthpiece and that just dangles down underneath my chin. That way, if something goes wrong with one second stage, it starts to free flow for whatever reason, I can quickly, easily swap over to my, uh, to my alternate second stage, isolate the valve, so switch it off, determine what's wrong with it, find a leak if there's a leak, or, uh, or just kind of switch it off, fix it underwater, repressurize it, and go back to breathing from it. Now that is, uh, is nearly impossible on, um, on twin sets, because it's all this is all happening behind your head, behind your shoulders, uh, without physically taking your BCD and your twin set off. Uh, nah, it's going to be a real pain, especially if you have to be neutrally buoyant. Whereas with with side mount, it's all happening right in front of you, and you can adjust it. Uh, you can even get side mount rebreathers now. Uh, I've seen a couple in um, in sort of testing and production. Uh, so yeah, everything's going down the rebreather route, even side mount. So this is better for, um, uh, for confined spaces and uh, extended reach as well. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at a couple questions about side mount specifically. Okay, so I've got a couple questions. The first one is uh, from Lewis via Discuss. Uh, he wants to know what length uh, BCD hose you'd need for the Hollis SMS 100 to use it with single or, uh, or twin sets. Uh, so the Hollis uh, SMS 100 was, uh, was really one of the first like dedicated side mount BCDs to come out, uh, but they added a bit of flexibility so that you can use it with singles and you can use it with twins. Um, it's not really what it's made for, but, uh, but it can take it. Uh, it takes a bit of adjustment. Uh, but of course the hose that comes with it is quite short. It's only about a, a 14 to 16 inch hose. Um, that's a bit long for side mount and that's a bit short for um, for single or twin sets, so, um, so most of us we just tend to ditch that. Um, to use it with a uh, with a single stage or a twin set, the easiest way is just to measure it. Um, so put the BCD on with your um, uh, with your single or with your uh, your twin set and just get a tape measure. Um, but I just have to go at it, and uh, it's about 22 to 24 inches. Uh, it's really dependent on how big your uh, your stages are. Um, if you've got twin seven litre cylinders on your back, they're going to be much, much thinner than uh, like twin 12s or something. Um, but 22 to 24 inches should be enough to, um, to get to your first stage. Uh, also, Sean via Twitter using the, uh, simply, uh, the scuba live hashtag, uh, he asks, I'm looking at the, uh, the Hollis one, uh, SMS 100 and, uh, and a lot of the newer BCDs nowadays are much smaller uh, what would you recommend? Uh, so yeah, so SMS 100 was really designed to be a, uh, a sort of BCD that does a little bit of everything. It's specialist for the uh, for the side mount market, uh, but you can put a, a single and you can put twins on as well. 
A lot of them nowadays are just side mount specific. So, uh, so Hollis came out with the SMS uh, 50 and now the 75, which is kind of a hybrid between the 100 and the 50. Uh, and that's a more sort of trapezoid, sort of triangular diamond shaped bladder. Um, you've got the, uh, the Apex WSX, um, that just came out about a month or two ago, and that has a really nice uh, sort of wraparound bladder. Depending on what kind of diving you're going to be doing, the, um, the WSX, the Apex, and the like, SMS 50 and 75, they're good for sort of confined water. They're, they're just really nice and simple. You don't feel like you're wearing a big clunky BCD. There's no back plate. There's no sort of big clunky um, sort of straps or anything. Uh, it's just a really nice free way of diving. So if this is your first like side mount BCD, I'd go for something like the Apex, the, uh, the WSX. It's, um, they've had a lot of time to think about it and just kind of tweak it and make it perfect. And um, yeah, it's just a really, really nice way of diving. Uh, and that's all the questions that I got for this month. So, uh, so any questions you got, remember to put them on, uh, on Facebook, put them on Twitter. Uh, remember to use the hashtag scuba live and um, any question you want me to answer, just put it forwards. Any, uh, any changes to the show that you'd like us to do, um, remember just that hashtag scuba live. And um, as always, safe diving out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.